Shining a bright red as always is I Red Luster, and welcome to my first ever review of a game. Today we'll be reviewing the newest installation of the Amnesia series, Amnesia the Bunker. This will be a mostly spoiler free video, but proceed with caution regardless. Before we get into it though, I'm going to talk about how I'm going to score this game. Going category by category, all scored by 0 through 5, we're going to talk about gameplay, story, difficulty, replayability, and then personal opinions. Starting with gameplay, Amnesia the Bunker plays a lot like its earlier installments. There's a lot of sneaking, messing with object physics, puzzles, and the works. But new to the Amnesia series is self-defense items. Granted, like the other games, you can't defeat the main antagonist by flooding them with lead. However, you can use them as second chances. Blasting them with either your starting revolver or hitting them with some fire or gas can make the monster leave you alone for a little bit. But resources are super tight in this game. I can't recall a time where I had enough ammo to even fill all the barrels on the revolver. I was always just barely scraping by with one or two and I used them extremely sparingly. But the newest mechanic I saw in this game that had the most interaction was the generator. The generator was a mechanic where you had to keep going back to the safe room to deposit any fuel you could find into it, otherwise it became dark. Now being in the dark wouldn't be that bad if it also didn't mean the monster got to flee room the hallways during blackouts. We'll be touching back on this in the difficulty rating. Overall, the game's ability to allow the player to manipulate the environment has been and likely will always be the best part of the Amnesia series. You can block doors with boxes, throw objects to get the monster distracted, or even use them to trigger traps from a safe distance. You can also break down heavy doors with something heavy, and there's just a lot of practical good game design that you get, to, you get a lot of good use out of. There's never a time where you're completely strapped for options. I'd give the gameplay a rating of 3 out of 5. It's not bad, the physics can be a little janky at times, but all the mechanics work for the most part and the player does get a fairly large amount of things they can do at any given time. Moving on to story, Amnesia storytelling is done primarily through notes you find the game. Now, a lot of games make the mistake of making the notes boring to read, however Amnesia is able to combine its storytelling with a lot of practical information, such as locations for items, gameplay mechanics, etc. Some of the notes also get read to you, however a majority of them will require that you pause and read them. I will say though, stuffing almost all the information on the plot and the backstory within the game into notes feels like a mistake. Sure, there's no real other way you'd get this information within the game's, you know, confines and world, but sitting down having to read so, so many notes does get rather exhausting. Not to mention the sheer amount of times you'll be rereading these notes because you've either gotten lost, forgotten what you were looking for, or trying to figure out where to go only extends the amount of time you'll be spent reading rather than playing. For what it's worth, however, the plot of the game is somewhat interesting. It requires a bit of work to get going, but it does get you thinking. Figuring out the plot twists or other details does feel good, especially when you can use it within gameplay. I give the story of the game a 3.5 out of 5. The way the story is conveyed could definitely use some work, but the overall story is something you can get invested in. Next up is difficulty. Now whilst this game does have difficulty settings, we'll be going based off the medium difficulty. The difficulty I'm pretty sure that's intended for most players. This game's difficulty however can be a bit of a wild beast. If you're good at puzzle solving, and you're brave, or if it's your second playthrough, Amnesia the Bunker can come off as a really easy game. However, if you're not good at puzzles, or afraid of exploring new areas, or brand new to the game, the difficulty can seem a lot more intense. This all has to do primarily with the previously mentioned generator mechanic. When the lights are on, the player has a time limit to complete objectives, since once the lights are off, trying to get anything accomplished is akin to pulling teeth out. The monster is outright oppressive in the darkness, and it can outright game over the player in one hit, which whilst panic inducing can quickly become frustrating since the fuel you find is very much a finite resource up to a certain point. 
This means if you play too cautiously, too slowly, it can end up making your game experience a lot worse since you'll often be stuck in the dark with hardly a shred of fuel left in your name, feeling like you're at the dead-end job living paycheck to paycheck. Players might even find themselves reloading a save purely because they spent way too much time trying to figure out what to do whilst the lights are on, or spending too many of their resources trying to defend themselves to make any amount of progress. On the flip side, however, if you're able to solve the puzzles, find all the fuel, and run around like mad while the lights are on, you'll hardly, if ever, encounter the main threat of the monster. Ironically, playing a horror game with a creature you can't defeat in combat is easiest when you play extremely aggressively, whereas playing passively will often lead you into dead ends that make progressing at all a major challenge, if not downright impossible. For this, I'm giving the game a 1 out of 5 for difficulty. It's far too aggressive on brand new players, whilst being far too easy on high skill or returning players. Moving on to replayability, Amnesia the Bunker doesn't have too much going for it. The only things that change in the game from playthrough to playthrough is item spawns and codes. You'll still be going in the same order of areas you went the first time, get the same plot related items in their set locations, and you won't even have anything special for your next playthrough like a new weapon or getting to keep your old items. What's really sad is the game encourages the player to play again, but hardly gives any good incentive to do so, not even adding a new plot twist or even a secret ending for playing the game a second time. Overall, the experience of playing a second time is a lot easier since you can optimize the amount of time you have in the light making the game almost a cakewalk. With no real good reason to play this game again more than once, I give it a 2.5 out of 5 for replayability, since it at least tries to make every playthrough unique, just not hard enough. Lastly, we reach personal opinions. This game has a lot of ups and downs. There was almost as many good scares as there was frustrating, confusing parts of the game. Whilst I did enjoy the game, I felt like I wouldn't have played it at all if it weren't for me making a recording for my YouTube channel. It's one of those games you play once, then promptly forget about it. At least until the modding scene gets going, and then you'll probably see lots of custom stories. There was a lot of mechanics I felt that could have worked better if they were tweaked or adjusted, such as the firebombs. You get access to these really early on, but you're unable to use them until you get the lighter, which you gain access to way too far late in the game before you'd get any practical use out of it. There were so many times I thought to myself, if I just had access to fire, I'd have a lot less frustration and a lot less backtracking I had to do. That's not to say the game wasn't a fun and interesting experience, it's just I don't think I'll go through it again unless I were to perform some kind of challenge. For that, I give it a 3 out of 5 for personal opinion. Tallying up this score, that's a 12.5 out of 25, 50% also known as a D. Amnesia the Bunker is by no means a terrible game, but for every somewhat good part of it, there is a somewhat less good part, keeping it from reaching its true potential. I would recommend watching some goofballs like me and Max play it, but playing it will either frustrate you or not challenge you enough depending on how much you know about the game. It's one of those games you play once, then you probably shelve it for good. Well, that's been my review of Amnesia the Bunker. I hope you enjoyed this new video, and uh, hopefully, maybe in the future if you guys want, I'll put reviews of other games. For now, this has been Red Luster, signing out.